Did you know that the Celestials are powerful cosmic beings created by the first firmament? The Celestials rebelled against their creator and aspirant counterparts in a war that shattered the first universe into the first multiverse. The Celestials are involved in the creation of new universes, including that of the prime Marvel universe. The Celestials visit planets, in what is known as Celestial Hosts, to experiment on and judge lower life forms. They create Eternals and Deviants from selected species. For Earth, the first host created Homo Immortalis and Homo Descendus, and inserted a latent gene into baseline humanity that causes mutations. The second host destroyed the Deviant Kingdom Lemuria and caused the sinking of Atlantis. The third host forced the gods of Earth to submit and vow not to interfere with the Celestials' work. The fourth host came to judge Earth, the Asgardians and Eternals tried to fight them, but were easily defeated. The fourth host spared the Earth after Gia offered them twelve of Earth's finest mortals. Proving humanity's worth. In addition, one celestial came to Earth four billion years before the other celestials and died. Its body fluid spilled into the planet, changing it forevermore. According to Loki, it is because of this giant cosmic accident that Earth is so unique among all the planets in the universe for being such a hotbed for superpowered madness. In the beginning, there was only one universe, the first firmament, perfect but alone. This sentient universe decided to create life, celestial servants. Some of these servants industriously worshipped the first firmament, seeking its approval whenever they created life on their own, which prompted the first firmament to name them aspirants. Others, multicolored rebels, who were as many as the stars themselves, wanted their own creations to evolve, and wanted the universe to grow, change and die. That was seen by the first firmament as madness and sacrilege. War eventually broke out between the multicolored rebels, later known as simply celestials, and the aspirants for the dominion of all existence. The war greatly diminished both groups. Eventually the rebellious Celestials resorted in desperation to using powerful weapons to eliminate their opponents, including the Aspirant's God-Killer armor, which the Celestials used to win the final battle of the war. After a decisive battle in the Celestial War, there was a lull in fighting between the two groups. During this time, the Aspirants fortified their fleets and immediately entered into aggressive squabbles among themselves, which gave the opposing Celestials time to recover and to plot ways to finish crushing their opponents. The Celestial War ultimately ended when the Rebel Celestials shattered the first firmament into pieces. The rebellious Celestials detonated their weapons, and hundreds of new universes were split off from the first firmament. The first firmament fled along with the remaining aspirants. And the new universes formed a collective entity called the Second Cosmos, which was the first multiverse. Desiring to balance creation with destruction, the Celestials gave life to the primordial darkness, creating abominations called exterminators. They eventually grew too powerful for the Celestials to control and turned on them. The Celestials imprisoned the exterminators in one of the newly created universes lest they devour the newly created multiverse itself, the Second Cosmos, or Second Infinity, was colonized by the rebel Celestials. These Celestials evolved their own servitors whom they came to call Omegas, a name given to them to signal opposition to the first firmament, who was the Alpha, beginning. After the second cosmos ended and became the third cosmos, the Celestials moved on to the third cosmos while the Omegas stayed outside, becoming then known as the Beyondus among other names. Upon entering the abyss left by the destruction of the sixth universe, they filled it with the seventh universe, however, they encountered Null, a primordial god of darkness, who had ruled over that abyss. Enraged, Null attacked and decapitated a celestial using a sword of living darkness, and began a war against the celestials and their creations. The body and soul of the felled celestial were bound to Null and trapped in the realm between, while the severed head was turned into the mining city and space station of Nohir. In opposition to the Celestials' apparent agenda were the Watchers. Having sworn an oath of non-interference in species younger than themselves, 
The watchers found the celestials' genetic engineering of such species to be the antithesis of what they believed in. Thus, the watchers and the celestials were in a non-confrontational conflict for billions of years. As watchers do not act. An object called the Black Vortex was created 12 billion years ago by the celestial named Godhead. Godhead created the Black Vortex after an individual named Gara from the alien Viscardi species expressed to the cosmic being her species' desire to explore beyond their race's current potential. Gara was the first of the Viscardi to use the Black Vortex and gain enormous power. One year later, a war among the Viscardi left Gara as the sole survivor of her species. Point four billion years ago, a celestial referred to her as the progenitor crashed onto Earth after it was infected by the parasitic race known as Horde. The progenitor died a sad, lonely death, and its body was buried within the Earth below the North Pole. The celestial's diseased body fluids seeped into the Earth and percolated through the planet's prime val surface, forever altering the Earth's evolutionary trajectory. This process ultimately gave rise to the superhuman abnormalities present in many of Earth's inhabitants. Four billion years ago, a celestial referred to as the progenitor crashed onto Earth after it was infected by the parasitic race known as Horde. The progenitor died a sad, lonely death, and its body was buried within the Earth below the North Pole. The celestial's diseased body fluids seeped into the Earth and percolated through the planet's prime val surface, forever altering the Earth's evolutionary trajectory. This process ultimately gave rise to the superhuman abnormalities present in many of Earth's inhabitants. A million years ago, a celestial named Zgreb the Aspirant came to Earth in search for the progenitor. Zgreb found the progenitor and became infected with the Horde. However, the Horde mutated him into a rabid, dark celestial, the first of its kind. Zgreb went berserk and entered into conflict with the Avengers of the Stone Age. They defeated the weakened and sickly Zgreb and buried it underground in the territory that would become South Africa in modern times. The loss of the two celestials drew the attention of the rest of their kind. An a sizable group of celestials came to Earth to perform the experiment known as the First Host. The Stone Age Avengers tried to fight the visitors, but they were soundly defeated. To look after the result of the contagion, the First Host of Celestials then genetically engineered 100 Eternals, Homo Immortalis, dot 30 in addition to that. They also created 100 Grotesques Deviants, Homo Descendus, and developed the X gene that would eventually give rise to mutants after the creation of these species. The Celestials created the mysterious objects known as black monoliths to help record vast amounts of data over the centuries. Numerous humans interacted with these black monoliths over the centuries. Unlike the Eternals, the Deviants' population reached great numbers in a few millennia and took over the world, enslaving humanity. Unlike the Eternals, the Deviants' population reached great numbers in a few millennia and took over the world, enslaving humanity. The Eternals tried to fight them, but soon they were forced to call the Celestials for help. When the second host of Celestials finally arrived on Earth, they were attacked by the Deviants, led by Emperor Frog, seeing a world fallen into chaos. The Celestials soon delivered their judgment and wiped out most of the Deviants. In the process, they caused Lemuria and Atlantis to sink all the way to the bottom of the ocean floor. Around this time, the celestial by the name of Ares Hem came into conflict with fellow celestial Chiamat, who would later become known as the Dreaming Celestial. The conflict ended with the defeat and burial of Chiamat under what would later become Northern California, near San Francisco. At some point in ancient history, the celestial known as Eason the Searcher used telepathy to communicate with the Egyptian warlord named Ian Sabineur. Eason struck a deal with Ian Sabineur, giving him the technology to build great, complex ships that would allow the warlord to shape the destiny of the world. Eason also gave Ian Sabineur the title of Apocalypse and stated that one day, maybe in centuries or millennia, the Celestials would come for payments for their gifts. The Celestial Madonna, an apparent female Celestial, 
appeared in 114 AD at the Palace of Zhongheng, a member of the Brotherhood of the Shield in Luoyang. Zhong went to her and revealed him the existence of the celestial egg existing within Earth, and revealed as well that she was carrying a child, something new, unique, or forbidden. That birth would destroy her in any case, but would need nourishment. As she was hesitating between using Earth, causing quick extinction, or the moon, with cataclysmic consequences on Earth, Zhong Heng proposed an alternative, the sun bathing herself in the Earth's sun, she was destroyed while her progeny was found by Leonardo da Vinci in 1956. The third host came to Earth about 1,000 years ago. Once again the celestials moved across the globe experimenting and testing their handiwork. Wary of the intervention of these alien gods, Odin Borson convened a gathering of all the known sky gods like himself and choose three of their number to meet with the celestials. Odin, Zeus Panhellenios, and Vishnu confronted Arishem, but Arishem was unfazed by their assault. Arishem then attacked the gods' home dimensions and proved that it alone had the power to cut off each and every pantheon from Earth. This led to all the Sky Fathers pledging to not interfere with the Celestials for 1,000 years. In 1013, Apocalypse came to Scandinavia to kill on the Council of Ramatut, who informed him of beings and ancestors of people who would cause a threat to him in the future. After defeating Thor, he went to London and sent his four four horsemen, Pestilence of Phantom Bats of the Twelve Mines, War, Native American Famine, and Death, to kill Folkburn Logan ancestor of Wolverine, but they were all destroyed by Thor. Thor faced off with Ian Saber Nur. He was defeated. Seeking revenge, Thor blessed Jarmjorn with his own blood to imbue it with the power to pierce celestial armor. Not willing to accept defeat, Apocalypse destroyed his celestial pyramid ship in a failed attempt to kill Thor. In the mid 12th century Holo Shan Mountains of northern Mongolia, Nur heard of a ruler, a feared immortal magician, whose magics are such that legions ran in fright. In a confrontation, Nur slew all of Garbashian's guards. Garbashian then sought to humble his fellow forever walker by revealing the secret titanic alien vessel. Having had previous experience with futuristic technology, Nur attacked Garbashian and left the other immortal for dead. Not understanding how to kill an immortal, Garbashian survived and fled. After striking down Garbashian, Nur entered the ship and lived on it for many years, not fully understanding how to communicate with it or control it. Shortly after finding the ship, Nur and his riders of the dark were constantly attacked by a young warrior with a sword and shield calling himself the Traveler. After years of sending assassins and battling the Traveler, the severed Traveler's left cybernetic arm, and during the confusion, the traveler pulled a gun and shot him in the head. After reattaching his techno-organic arm, Traveler was accepted as the new leader of the Riders of the Dark, but declined. Traveler turned to Ozymandias and instructed him to remember that there will always be someone smarter and stronger around and that being fit to survive means to have the responsibility to help those who are not. Unaware to the Traveler, his techno-organic infected blood mixed with nerves, as he wiped Nur's blood on Ozymandias. Ozymandias had Nur's dead body brought to the alien ship. Hoping that its technology could heal him, and Traveller arrived to ambush a caravan of advanced technology. Traveller explained to Ozymandias that the ship was actually a celestial transport for a highly advanced alien race, a sentient exploratory device, and entered the ship. Inside, Traveller learned that his blood mixed with the techno-organic virus, and Nur's resurrected Nur, and infected with the virus, allowed Nur to understand ship. Nur was transformed and enhanced by celestial technology. Becoming one of the most powerful beings who would ever live, now possessing the ability of total control over the molecular structure of his body. Angry at the revelation, Traveller told Nur that if he was responsible for his immortality, he would make Nur spend eternity far away from there and sent both ship and its passenger far into space. Over the next few centuries, 
Chip sentience slowly evolved and no noticed, but enslaved it, telling Ship that he had created it. After. In the 20th century, the fourth host of Celestials returned to Earth to judge the final stage in their genetic experiments. To do this, they settled on the Inca Plateau in South America and collected materials and beings from across the globe. The appearance of these enigmatic giants around the world terrified the world's population and triggered the attempted intervention of S.H.I.E.L.D. The Celestials sealed themselves inside an impenetrable dome and began their judgment. Odin, fearful of celestial power and angered by their interference on Earth, gathered the life force of all of Asgard to battle the Celestials for the fate of the Earth. Despite having Thor and the Eternals at his side, the Celestials defeated Odin and spared the Earth after the intervention of Gia and the gift of twelve special humans selected from every pantheon. The fourth host then left Earth erasing the memory of their existence from the minds of humanity early in the 21st century, after being manipulated into awakening the dreaming Celestial, the Eternals learned that it was only through the efforts of the Eternal Makkari that it did not reset local spacetime one billion years past or destroy this corner of the Milky Way galaxy. It was angry over its imprisonment but decided instead to observe and investigate the Earth. The very presence of the Dreaming Celestial was initially considered a threat and dangerous to the very existence of humanity, and all life on Earth by the Avengers. It was only through the mental intervention of the Eternals that the 2,000-foot Golden Celestial now standing in Golden Gate Park, was accepted by humanity at large. As time passed, the Celestial's emotional and mental stability was becoming more and more erratic as it claimed to be questioning the reason for its imprisonment. Its place as designated by the Fulcrum and it's his plans for all of creation. The Dreaming Celestial began exhibiting more non-celestial behaviors, such as admiring Iron Man's guile in battle and the UN doing of the death of the eternal Thena's human son so much that Watu the Watcher began to question the Celestial's mental balance. Soon after the High Evolutionary and Mr. Sinister tampered with the Dreaming Celestial's armor, the Prime Celestial host came to Earth, apparently finally taking an interest in its reawakening. Cyclops' extinction team boldly attempted to bluff the assembled Celestials. Asking them to leave, they consented, but only when the Dreaming Celestial itself, no longer infested by Mr. Sinister's machinations, told them to buy pointing skyward. Be why this time, the dreaming celestial's confusion and questioning of itself was beginning to physically affect the people it communicated with, culminating in the death of Makkari, the subsequent death of Cersei, and rebirth of Makkari, all due to the Eternal's relationship with the celestial. Finally, confronting its creator. The Fulcrum Jack, it chose to leave this plane of existence with it him, the Celestials thought that with life and creation there must be death and destruction, so they created the Exterminators to be that death and destruction. However, the Exterminators turned against the Celestials who couldn't kill them, so they separated the universe into the multiverse and imprisoned and bonded them into space between the walls separating realities. However, the Celestials didn't learn from their first mistake and created the Death Seed with the same purpose. But far more manageable, the Exterminators were trapped in their prison for millennia, until the walls between realities began to weaken. Tears, cracks, and fissures grew larger and larger until the Exterminators were able to escape. The Celestials thought that with life and creation there must be death and destruction so they created the Exterminators to be that death and destruction. However, the Exterminators turned against the Celestials who couldn't kill them, so they separated the universe into the multiverse and imprisoned and bonded them into space between the walls separating realities. However, the Celestials didn't learn from their first mistake and created the Death Seed with the same purpose, but far more manageable. The Exterminators were trapped in their prison for millennia until the walls between realities began to weaken. Tears, cracks, and fissures grew larger and larger until the exterminators were able to escape. AOA Nightcrawler and Dark Beast used the Dreaming Celestial to create a portal to their world. Unfortunately, this portal opened the rift between realities wide enough for the exterminators to pass through to Earth 295.1 of the exterminators departed to Earth 616 where he drained the Dreaming Celestial while the other two exterminators remained on Earth 295. One feeding off the rift and the other seeking out the power of Apocalypse in the Death Seed, once again, 
as Tiamat was supposedly already dead by its own hand on Earth 616, celestial events become convoluted and almost mythological. Kang the Conqueror recovered John John from Baron Mordo's tomb in Brazil, Kang gave the axe to Uriel during his training to become the new apocalypse. Uriel used the weapon to kill a celestial gardener outside the Starcore station as part of the Apocalypse Twins plan to trick the Celestials into destroying Earth while they evacuated all of Earth's mutants to Planet X. Thor later retrieved the Jarned Jorn and used it to kill destroy the space armor of Exeter the Executioner before it could destroy Earth. Whether this truly destroyed the Celestial, or merely shunted it back to wherever the Celestials truly live as the Invisible Woman had previously done to help end the so-called Celestial Watcher War is unknown. After Exeter's destruction, Sentry revealed to Wasp that he would take a great journey moving the Celestial body far from Earth. Before leaving, he warned her that they must prepare themselves because the Celestials' wrath would be mighty among their many solutions to halt the incursions, the Illuminati asked Galactus to arrange a meeting with the Celestials so the group could ask them for help. However, during the meeting, the Celestials mysteriously vanished. The explanation for this event was that the Celestials were being attacked in every universe at the same time by the Beyonders, who after a long battle managed to kill them all. After the recreation of the universe the first firmament sent one of his aspirants to cause damage to eternity, the arrival of this celestial destructor was foreseen by the precognitive inhuman Ulysses Kane. The entity appeared in New York City near Stark Tower where it was confronted by the joint forces of the Avengers, Avengers Unity Division, New Avengers, Ultimates, A-Force, X-Men, New Attilans Inhumans, and other heroes including Doctor Strange, Scarlet Witch, Hellstorm, Shaman, Spider-Man, War Machine, Spider-Woman, Wolverine, Hulk, and Hercules. While most of the heroes were busy fighting the Servitors, the magic users of the group cast a spell that returned the Celestial to its own dimension. As it turned out, not all of the Celestials were destroyed by the Beyonders. A handful of survivors managed to escape and hide out at the furthest edges of the universe within the deep folds of space-time. Unlike the other cosmic beings, the Celestials that were destroyed were apparently not brought back to life when the multiverse was restored. The surviving Celestials were confronted by Logos, the fusion of Lord Chaos, Master Order, and the Inbetweener. Logos believed himself to be the new judge of worlds, something the Celestials formerly did. Logos considered the Celestials to be unwanted competition as judges of worlds and thus destroyed the surviving Celestials though he was told that nothing truly died by the Queen of Nevis. Who secretly saved the one above all while Logos killed the other Celestials, making him the last Celestial. It was later revealed that Logos was being manipulated by the first firmament in a bid to return to its original position as everything that is, the Celestials were eventually returned to life as the fifth host by the Queen of Nevis to thwart the first firmament's attempt to take over the multiverse. Screb was eventually awakened in modern times when a team of archaeologists uncovered the underground cavern it was sealed in. The fallen shouted summon, the final host, while killing the archaeologists. Later, Loki, the Asgardian god of mischief, released the fallen from its prison and used it to bring about the final host of dark celestials in order to wipe out Earth, arguing that the planet was ill-ridden as a result of the progenitor's arrival and death having altered the Earth's evolutionary trajectory billions of years prior. Before arriving to Earth, the dark celestials used the horde to infect and kill every celestial in existence. Their bodies were hurled to the Earth to herald the arrival of their murderers during the Avengers' final stand against the dark celestials. The bodies of the felled celestials were reanimated by the Horde. When the Avengers joined their energies to form a Gestalt Unimind, they used its power to defeat the Horde, and it became dormant. The celestials were freed from its influence, and they helped the Avengers take down the Dark Celestials. En route to Earth, Null decided to settle his Eon's old score with the celestials and slew at least three of them reanimating and controlling their corpses using his living abyss, the celestials usually appear as massive armor-clad humanoids of enormous size, with most of them standing 2,000 feet in height and some even larger which Exeter stands over 20,000 feet high, each varies in color and design, which is very elaborate in some individuals. Each has one head, two arms two legs, indistinct features on their helmet sometimes exhibiting two eyes, sometimes more sometimes none. 
The designs on their armor are of a practical nature and each serves a function of one kind or another, Arsheim's formula of judgment on its thumb for example. Many, but not all, also have great equipment on their backs or carry great staffs capable of breaking down and reconstructing all forms of energy matter or lay waste of entire continents. It has been reported that the celestials' bodies are modular, made up of thousands of varied objects and beings. It has also been reported that they may combine to create larger more powerful amalgams and can animate severed limbs and even their computer where is sentient. Celestial's armor can be taken off. After the dreaming celestial took off his helmet, he revealed his glowing face, their interior is comprised of black biomechanical matter which is capable of absorbing the souls of their experiments. Such as the Eternals, in order to sustain themselves. The Celestials also have a variety of internal defenses, such as armored behemoths, jellyfish-like antibodies, and winged and tentacled creatures which swarm in great numbers while firing powerful blasts from their single eye. Allegedly, no one has even seen a Celestial without armor. A theory from scientists is that they exist in hyperspace, while their armors are simply channels allowing them to interact in the regular plane of reality. On Earth 90266, it was stated that the armors worked on willpower and were controlled by thoughts. It was stated by the celestial Madonna that Earth and many other worlds were implanted with a celestial egg embryo at their center, gestating for millions of years before birthing and consuming the planet. Similar processes was witnessed in Earth 9997 and other realities, this process of reproduction is seemingly the rule, but not the only way celestials come into being, the celestial Madonna was herself carrying a celestial, something she considered new unique forbidden. The process cycle function of replication reproduction was assured to cause the mother's death, and required suitable nourishment, who could be found in Earth, the moon, causing their destruction, or the sun. The infant celestial, dubbed the star child, was stated to be a variant celestial, for millions of years, the black galaxy was a universal curiosity, an area of space composed entirely of biological matter. In recent times, it was revealed to be the birth crash of a new celestial. A red celestial oversaw the process, using armored capsules to assemble the full armor of a new celestial. The bodies of Eric Masterson and Hercules were incorporated into this mixture. Also, a sphere of pure white energy became the center point for the Celestial's creation. When the alleged Celestial Slayer called Stellaris made a kamikaze run on the white sphere, her megaton impact triggered the final birthing process. The white sphere expanded to encompass the entire black galaxy, then contracted back to its original size, pulling the biomatter of the entire galaxy back into that point leaving behind light years of completely empty space. The compressed bioverse of the sphere and the assembled celestial armor combined to produce a new and unnamed blue celestial, the Rigelian analyzer proffered that the celestials may have created the black galaxy or merely commandeered it, and that the supposedly antagonistic Stellaris was both a necessary part of the birth process and encased in living armor identical to the celestials, according to Varua's insight. The Celestials are uniminds of entire planets clad in armors. That theory led her to create the pan-human unimind. For it to be put by the young gods into an armor as the Celestial Terran. It is unknown if that is true, though Makkari expressed doubt and Legba hinted it wasn't true. On Earth 92131, the race now known as the Emkran developed individuals who could be referred as mutants. That species of cosmic mutants then evolved a step beyond mutants, becoming the Celestials. Point one of those, Codus the Harvester, thought that mutants from other worlds would eventually rise to replace his kind. A mysterious device known as the Creation Constellation was discovered by two human scientists which turned them, including Outlaw and Domino into Celestials. All Celestials are linked to one another by quantum telepathy, meaning no matter where or when they are they are in communion with each other. The Celestials' agenda is ultimately unknown, as is the exact purpose of the Celestials' genetic manipulation and responsibilities. Repeatedly returning to each world, the races in question are evaluated over a 50 Earth year period and should a test subject race fail by the Celestials' standards. Aris Hem the judge's judgment calls the coming of Exeter the exterminator to the target world. Exeter, a Celestial ten times Arisham's own height, purifies the offending world of the race, or races, by destroying those non-life-affirming elements. 
Thor was on the planet Pangoria when this happened, and was told the issues at stake were too great for even an immortal to grasp. According to the Dreaming Celestial, the celestial race are the instruments of the teeming of life in their respective universes under the will of an entity known as the fulcrum that serves as the mastering force behind the equilibrium of all creation. Planets populated by a viable base species possessing the requisite neurological potential are chosen for cultivation. 100 specimens are evolved into Eternals, another 100, into Deviants, with the former being created to be more powerful while the latter being created to breed more efficiently and prodigiously. The Celestials then leave their specimens to their own devices and after 19 cosmic cycles the tested planets are chosen for destruction. The aggregate energy from the base species is harvested and channeled to the fulcrum. If the planet's aggregate energy signature is consistent with the Eternals, then the life force will be transferred to the Celestials before being sent to the fulcrum. However, if the aggregate energy signature is consistent with the deviants, then the life force will be transferred to the horde. A malicious counterpart to the celestials and the instrument of reaping on chosen planets under the order of the fulcrum due to their imposing presence, all concealing armor, and seeming indifference omnipotence to those whom they judge, the celestials have acquired the sobriquet of space gods used by many starfaring races. On their last evaluatory visit to Earth 616 in the fourth host, the Celestials wiped all memory of their existence from most of humanity. The only entities remaining aware of the Celestials' existence were the Asgardians, who actively opposed the Celestials' unrevealed motives, the other Pantheons, and Earth's Eternals and Deviants. In modern times, however, with the rise of superhumans, many superheroes rediscovered the existence of the Celestials. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Comment below, share for more, did you know videos by Yahira Lovely Loves. Merch is available at www.iOctopus.biz.